Hello everyone, welcome to this special session. My name is Victor and I'll be taking you through how to use Tableau in creating joins and blending of data sources. Okay, now before we go proper into that, I would like to tell you a bit about what or the different types of joins. Okay, now we have four main different types of joins. You have the inner join. Now, what makes it an inner join? It's not that difficult to catch, right? So this intersection between these two circles. So let's say you have a table, all right? So two tables, take it that each circle is a table. Now, where these two tables have similar um, columns, okay? and column quantity, that is what will be presented, all right? Then you have another one, you have, um, you have the left join, okay? You have the left join, forgive my handwriting, you're gonna like it. <laughs> you have the left join now, so you're basically concentrating on what is on the left side, and in addition, what is um, similar, between the two tables. Then you have the right join, which is not so different from the left join. It just means that the table on the right is the one giving preference. And then it also considers the intersection, okay? So you're taking what is on the left, joining it towards on the right based on what is similar between the two of them. Then you have what we call a full join a full join, okay? Basically, for a full join, you're merging all the tables together, okay? No special features. And that's what we're gonna be looking at using Tableau, okay? All right then. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and take you straight there. Okay, now, Yeah, so this is what you have. Okay, so what are we trying to do? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import the data set that we'll be using, all right? So it's a CSV file, okay? It's a CSV file, store data. Okay, so that's the first table. All right, so as you can see, these tables have several columns. This hash here signifies that what is here is a number. ABC signifies that what is on this column is text. For this date logo, what's here is date. Okay. Now, basically, what am I trying to do with this? Well, it's not so difficult to catch. So as you can see, I'm brought in this first table. Okay, it's called the store data table. Now looking at it, you can tell that this is a fact table because it has several primary keys from other tables in them. Okay, so I'm gonna want to use this other table that I had brought in before, a master product table. So if I bring it, yeah. Now, what you see here is something in Tableau called a relationship, all right? So within the relationship is a join, all right? Now, sometimes this might work advantageously, at other times, not so much. So what you need to do instead is you need to click on store data, and click on open. Now, what this will allow for is to be more deliberate about our joining and creating relationships. So now you see we have something different this time around. If I click on this circle, so you now see the different types of joins I had explained early on. Okay, so the first one is the inner join. Now, if you put your cursor on it, what does it do? It includes only values with with matches in both tables. 
your left join. It includes all values in left table and all matches from the right table. Members without matches will show up as nulls on the right. You go to your right join. It's similar to the left join, but just the inverse. And you go to the full outer join. What does it do? It includes all values from both tables. Members without matches show up as nulls. Now, already it's on a it's on an inner join. Okay. It's on an inner join. So how does it affect? If you notice this here, if you can see here, right here, it says store data. So this is store data table. Okay. And now if you keep scrolling, you see master product. So this is where master product table comes in, right? And you can see that the primary connector here is product ID, okay? The product ID, all right? So it means it is true the product ID that these two tables are connected, all right? Now, that is very important because the product ID in the store data table is a foreign key meaning it appears multiple times, okay? Now, the product ID in the master product table is a primary key, meaning it's a unique identifier. Then you might ask me, but why do I still have up to 9,000 plus rows? It is because whilst you might have a unique um, product ID, if you look through this data set, okay, you will see that there is a mixture here. Whilst the product ID here is F-U-R-B-O, right? The next one is F-U-R-C-H, okay? Now, checking the customer ID, they might look the same, but the product ID is different. So it's a unique case. And quite a number of this appears in this data set. So do not be too concerned about it, okay? But you might still wonder, how does this now come to play? Well, I will show you. Remember, these are two different tables. One of the unique things we're going to use, okay, is as you can see sales here. Sales here is under the store data table. But if you look at the master product table, it has no sales. So this join will enable me combine sales and something as simple as subcategory. Okay, so I'll just go to sheet one and I will show you how that works. Okay, so this is sheet one. Okay, now Tableau is unique in the sense that every chart has a sheet assigned to it. So for every chart, you want to do one sheet. So if you wanted to do 10 whole charts, you have to do 10 sheets, okay? Before you finally create the dashboard. All right. So we're gonna do just one, but looking at this here, you can see that the two tables are separated, okay? Separated on the grounds of the folder. Now, if you want them to be together, you can just click on this drop down here and you can say group by folder because right now they were grouped by data stores before. Okay, now you've grouped by folder. So you can see the demarcation here. These ones here are numbers. The ones above are text or date. Okay. And the one above is called dimensions and the one below, they are called measures. Now, remember, I told you that because of the join, we will now be able to combine the two tables together and work on it. What do I mean by that? I will show you in a second. Okay. So, for example, I can take um, from the product table. Okay, from the master from the master product table, which is a product table, I can take subcategory. All right. 
So you can see subcategories, okay? Mm, I want to be a little adventurous. Okay, I can take subcategories, okay? Now, I can then come to the measures. I will take sales. When I put it here, it sums up my sales. Can you see the charts I'm getting? Okay, now remember this sales is from my store data table, which was a fact table. Meanwhile, subcategory is from my uh, dimension table, which is the master product table. Okay, now just to add a little spice to this visual, I'm going to bring in my other dates. Okay, so we can have some dates attached to it. All right, so this is the sales made from each subcategory. Of course, you want to see the full sales. I can take sales and put it on label and you can see how much sales were made. All right, so this is how much sales were made in each subcategory in 2015 how much sales were made in each subcategory in 2016, how much sales were made 2017 and 2018. Total sales, remember. Now, all this is because, simply because um, I have combined the two um, tables together with a join, all right? Because I have combined the two tables together with a join now that is what has made that work okay now now that we've done that now that we've done that the next thing i'm going to take you through is how to do a blend i'm sure you're excited about that well let's go on i'll show you yeah so now we're about to go into blend on tableau Okay, don't forget, we're still on Tableau. We're about to go into Blend. Now, what is the unique feature with Blend? Imagine you have two different tables, okay? Now, but these two different tables have a lot of things in common. Now, in Join, you are more concerned about a one-to-one -one connection, okay? A one-to-one -one relationship, that's your main focus. But there are situations in several tables that there might be multiple connections, multiple possible relationships. Now, the best way to go about it is a blend. Okay. Now, how do we do that? I'll show you right away. Walk with me on this journey. All righty. Okay. So, now, here is how we do that. Here is how we do it, okay? So I'm gonna bring in two different tables, okay? Um, but this time around, I'm gonna bring them as different data sources, okay? So I'll bring in my first data source. Um, we will call this one the sales order. Okay, that's just where I have it saved on my device. Now it's going to load. Okay, so this is the first data source. All right, so you can see this table right here. First, let me rename it. I don't like the fact that it's called sheet one, so I'll call it sales order. Okay, now, so Whilst looking at, by the way, this is called metadata. It just describes what is in each particular um, column, okay? Now, looking at this, you can see I have other ID, other dates, ship dates, ship mode. I have um, customer ID, sales rep. I have location and many other things inside. And I do have a couple of nulls too, okay? All right then. Now, imagine I want to do a 
blend. Okay. Now I will click on my sheet one first because I have to bring in another data set. But this time around, I'm going to bring it as a new data source. Okay. So a new data source. Now this one will be a text CSV. Okay. Store data. So it means I'm using two different data sources. One was a an Excel file. The other one, which is this one, is a CSV. Now, does something look familiar? You had the other ID there. You had the other data, ship date, the ship mode. Okay. You had customer ID. Um, but your sales weren't quite the same, but you had sales also. Now we want to do a blend. Now look how this becomes more and more interesting. Okay. Look how this becomes more and more interesting. I'll just change the name. Okay. Okay, now I've renamed it. Okay, now you have two data sources. You want to do a blend. Remember that some of the columns in these two tables look the same, but the tables are not exactly the same. So in order to do a blend now, where I am clicked, if I do a blend from using this one, that first one, which is sales order table, this will become my primary data source and the second one will become my secondary one but I'll like to use the second one, store data. Then after I clicked on store data, I go to data, click on it, and I see edit blend relationships. Okay, edit blend relationships. Now, once I do that, I'm gonna change this setting. So it says blend relationships. Uh, let me see if I could maximize it for you. Okay. So it says here, blend relationships determine how data from secondary data sources are joined with primary data sources. Now, I'm going to move it from automatic to customary so that I can relate to these other things here. Now, some of these things here are not really quintessential. So I'm just going to press down shift and my down arrow key. And... When I get customer ID, I right click. Oh, actually I can remove, I click on remove down here. Why am I doing that? Because when I looked at that table that I had, remember the table we're looking at, there were some things that looked the same and those are the things I want to factor in. The ones that don't look alike, I'm just gonna remove them. So I press shift down arrow key, I remove the rest, okay? so. I remember that customer ID, similar to customer ID, order ID, similar, um, product ID, similar, ship, ship date, ship mode, okay? Now, I'm gonna click on, okay? But before then, in case I wanna check if there's anything else I could add, okay? So probably if there was anything else I could add, well, it looks like everything has been sorted appropriately. So I don't need to add anything else. All right, so I will just click on okay right here. Now I would like you to notice something. When I click on one of them, you see, click on one of them, it looks like everything is normal. Now, but I'm just gonna pick something from store data, for example. Let's say I wanna pick my, um, okay, let's say I wanna pick ship mode. Now, immediately I do that, you can see a check here, like a tick here. It means that this is my primary data source, okay? Primary data source. Now, why is this useful? I will show you. Now, while still in this primary data source, I can bring in my sales. It will sum up my sales for me. Okay, so I can see my sales based on the store data table. Now, let's say I want to see my ship mode um, sales 
based on the sales order table. If I click on the sales order table, now it's brought me the others, okay? What I can just do is, you can see this looking like linkages. It tells you these are the entities that are linked with the store data table, okay? For example, I think I can, yeah, I think I can just click on the link for ship date and you see that it's now allowed. So I can do something with ship date, okay? But before then, whilst I am still in sales order table, you see there is a red check here telling me the sales order table is my secondary data source. Now, so I can drag my sales here, up here to the columns. And you can see that the results are different. If you are not so convinced if the results are different, all you need to do is you drag the sales. So this is store data. If you drag your sales here, you're gonna see the amount. Now this one is for sales order, okay? If you drag your sales, you're gonna see the difference. So can you see the difference in the total number of sales? So for the store data table, the total number of sales done with the standard class is about 20 billion, but for the store um, sales order table, total number of sales with standard class is 858,000 plus, all right? If I wanna be a little more adventurous, because I have added a link, I've removed the, um link it's now open it's no longer hidden i can take ship dates and bring it here put it in the column now you see it's broken it's broken everything into years okay it's broken them into years all right so 2015 2016 now 2015 Okay, this would be 2014, but this would be for store data. But um, sales order table does not have a 2014, but they both have 2015, 2016, 2017. Okay, so you can see how blend helps you to work with two separate tables on the basis of the fact that they have multiple um columns that are relationary, okay? Now, just a little more bonus because I always like to give a bonus before we close this. When you come to this next call, you can see that nothing is checked here. When you come back here, you see that it's checked, right? You see the green tick, you see the red. When you come here, you see that nothing is checked unless you start everything afresh. So that tells you something unique about Tableau when it comes to blending, every single blending you do for the data sources is unique to the sheet you're working with, all right? So I hope you've been able to learn something from this episode on joining and doing a blend of data sources and tables on Tableau. I'll see you next time. Once again, my name is Victor. Thank you for enjoying this even as I enjoyed it. Bye for now.